This is lecture 13 of physics 210A, thermal physics. And in this lecture, we continue with our discussion of thermodynamic potentials. And we are going to introduce Gibbs free energy in this lecture. So, just to recall, we have discussed so far the internal energy U, which gave us du equals T ds minus P dV. Then we discuss enthalpy H that gave us dH equals T ds plus V dP. Then we discuss Helmholtz free energy that gave us df equals minus sdt minus p dv h was nothing but u plus pv helmholtz free energy is u minus t s. And each one of this was useful to describe a process in which these variables t, v, p, s, etc., were constant. Now we are going to introduce another thermodynamic potential that will be useful to describe systems when the temperature and the pressure are constant. So now we are going to introduce another thermodynamic potential and this is known as Gibbs free energy which is useful in describing processes that occur at constant temperature and constant pressure. What that means is that our system is in contact with the reservoir at some temperature T and also in contact with the pressure reservoir at constant pressure P. So, whatever processes occur will occur at this point. An example of such a thing is a chemical reaction that takes place at constant temperature and constant pressure in a test tube or in a beaker or in a petri dish or wherever. Now, Gibbs function or Gibbs free energy is defined as G equals H minus T s, which is U plus P V minus T s. So, this is also equal to F plus P V and therefore, D G is going to be equal to D H minus T D S minus S D T which is D H is T D S plus V D P then I have minus T D S minus S D T. T D S term cancels and you get D G equals V D P minus S D T. 
You, you can also get it from the other relationship that I wrote. I wrote dg, or g equals f plus pv, and therefore dg equals df plus P, db plus v, dp. And you put in for df minus sdt minus pdv, and you get minus s dt plus v, dp. And therefore, if I write dg as equal to partial g partial t at constant pressure dt plus partial g partial p at constant temperature times dp, you get dg over dt at constant pressure equals minus s and dg over dp at constant temperature equals v. And this gives Maxwell relation and we have derived these in so many times that I do not have to tell you again that I am taking the second derivative of dg with respect to p and t in two different directions and this gives me minus partial s partial p at constant temperature is equal to partial v partial t at constant pressure. So, what I like you to do is using Maxwell relation minus partial s partial p at constant t equals partial v partial t at constant p show that the internal energy of an ideal gas is independent of its pressure. Of course, we are taking the equation of state to be P V equals N R T. Now that we have obtained this function, just like what we did in Helmholtz free energy, this function gives free energy also gives you the equilibrium condition for systems which are at constant pressure and temperature and also the maximum useful work you can get from a system which is at constant temperature and pressure. So, let us let us show both of these. So, one delta G as a system approaches equilibrium is less than or equal to 0 and G is a minimum at equilibrium for systems at constant temperature and pressure. What we mean by that is that the system is in contact, contact with a heat reservoir at temperature T and a pressure is reservoir if you like at pressure P. The proof is exactly the same as we did for 
Helmholtz free energy. Now delta G, as we have written, is nothing but minus S delta T plus V delta P for a system. Now take this system to be in contact with a reservoir where the pressure and temperature are fixed. And there can be, can be a heat exchange between the two as the system goes towards equilibrium. I've already talked about what it means when a system is going through equilibrium. When it is in a situation from where it has to reach equilibrium, I can consider that state to be quasi-equilibrium. I can divide the system into many parts and consider each one of them to be in equilibrium. So delta S universe is going to be minus Q over T plus delta S, which is going to be greater than or equal to 0. Now this is minus Q plus T delta S is greater than or equal to 0. The first law of thermodynamics will then give that Q is equal to delta U plus P delta V. And therefore, I have minus delta U minus P delta V plus T delta S is greater than or equal to 0, which I can write as minus delta U plus P V minus T S is greater than or equal to 0, because P and T are constant. And therefore, minus delta G is greater than or equal to 0, or delta G is less than or equal to 0. As the system moves towards equilibrium, and at equilibrium under constant pressure and temperature, G is minimum. That's number one. Number two, delta G gives the maximum possible useful work done by the system. What we mean by that is when a system is changing its volume then P delta V work done by it against the pressure reservoir is useless work. Whatever is left then is the useful work. Again, we'll use the entropy maximization principle and say that minus Q over T, where Q is the heat given by the reservoir to the system, plus delta S is greater than or equal to 0. And minus Q plus T, delta S is greater than or equal to 0. First law gives Q equals delta U plus P, delta V plus W useful. You substitute this in, you get minus delta U minus P, delta V minus W useful plus T, 
delta s is greater than or equal to 0. And you change the signs and everything, and then you get from this that w useful is less than or equal to minus delta g. Now, this is different from delta f because some useless work in the form of p delta v is being done. So, you can very easily show that delta g is actually delta f minus p naught delta v. So, the useful work goes down by that amount. So, this is very similar to what we did in case of Helmholtz free energy, except that now we have constant pressure and constant T processes. So, I am not going to spend more time on this. Rather, when we do problems, you will understand it better. So, let me just conclude this lecture, therefore. By stating that uh, new thermodynamic potential gives free energy has been defined. This is useful to describe P equals constant and T equals constant together processes. Then at equilibrium attained when a system is in contact with pressure and thermal reservoirs G is minimum. And finally, useful work obtained when the pressure and temperature at the end of a process are the same is equal to minus delta G of the system. Uh, I would like you to think a bit about this point about pressure and temperature being the same at the end of the processes or the beginning and the end of the processes and the end at the beginning and end of a process and this is very similar to what we did in the case of Helmholtz free energy. What I need is that the end points pressure and temperature be the same in between system can be going through something else. This is because G is also a state function. Thank you.